Welcome back guys. Uh, today's lesson or today's skill, we're going to be expanding brackets and I'm going to be using um, a set of arrows, uh, two arrows and I'm putting the multiply sign above it just as a reminder of what to do. Now I kind of, and what I'll tell you of course is, I kind of think of it as like training wheels. And if we just think about when we first learned to ride a bike, we had training wheels. And then we got really confident with things and we might have been still wobbling around a little bit and the training wheels sort of caught us every now and again to stop us falling over. But then eventually we took the training wheels off and threw them in the shed and you never went back and used them again. Okay, you forgot about them. So what I've got to show you today is kind of like training wheels. Um, you're going to use them to start off with and as your confidence grows you may not even need to write this down. If you keep tripping up then you're not ready to take off the training wheels. And I'd like to see you continue to, to use these little arrows as a little reminder of how you need to expand the brackets and the, and the multiplication has to carry through everything inside the brackets. So um, I'll demonstrate that and then I'll demonstrate some common examples where you get to see, see this. And finally, I just want to reinforce an idea. We've got, we'll end up with two expressions that look differently but they have a common factor, so they're all always going to produce the same answer, so they're equivalent. And that's something we did a couple of lessons ago, this idea of equivalence. Um, so either way we can produce the same answer. And you have to look very carefully because the, the question may ask you to expand. And, and that's an important skill. So let's get behind the light board and, and show you a few of these moves. All right. Okay, we're going to do some uh, work here on expanding brackets and using or learning, maybe using or learning uh, a new skill here. And um, I want to just start, like, like a lot of things, I just want to take the pronumerals out of things and work with some numbers just to get the concept across. So. One way to do 3 times 21, um, I guess let's write the answer, it's not that hard, 63. What I'm trying to get across to you is that we can, we can see this as 3 times 20 plus 1. And then we could write it as 3 times 20 plus 3 times 1. Okay, um, the differences, well, there's, the main thing, I guess, is that we won't put the time sign here. And we didn't, while well, we did that, we didn't sort of look carefully and examine what we're doing there. We went 3 times 20, and we also went 3 times 1 as a way of working this out. Okay, and if we do the maths here, crunch the numbers, 3 times 20 plus 3 times 1, 60 plus 3 is 63. So, um, I think in the introduction I referred to these little arrows that I'm drawing as a training wheel. So, now I want to do an example, what you'll see um, a lot of in the textbook. And we've, we've got this kind of set up here. We've got four times, four times everything inside the brackets here. Okay. We've got a pronumeral in here now. And I guess what I'm saying, these are like your training wheels to help you remember what to do. And so when you first start out this, I want to see something like this as a little reminder for you to say, well, I need to multiply everything. This four needs to be multiplied through each of the things inside the brackets here. So 
4 times x, we just write that as 4x. Put the plus sign in there, because I uh, just got a plus sign there, and then 4, follow the next arrow across, 4 times 3. Just remember, we put the little time sign in, 4 times 3 is 12. The other thing I like to do is write it underneath each other, okay? So the plus signs line up, the 4x um, kind of lines up. There's a bit of a trap there because your eye will just connect those two together and maybe because there's no multiplication sign in there, you join those together and then what you'll do is come over here and instead of writing 12, which is the correct answer, you might join the, what I see is people write 43, they just join those two numbers together, or they write something like seven, they actually see the addition sign and go four plus three and make the mistakes. So just to be clear, you have to multiply those together. And what we need to see is four times, or what you need to say to yourself is four times three equals 12 and, and get those things right. So um, they're the common errors. I want you to avoid making them. And the best analogy I've got for you is to put the training wheels in until you're absolutely confident about what you're doing and you don't need them anymore. Okay, and just like training wheels. Once you don't need them, you never use them again. But I imagine a lot of you will need to do something um, like that. So let's just look at another example. And this example, um, you'll see a lot of this kind of thing too, where we have these sort of rectangles with these dimensions here. Um, one of the little boxes, uh, 2 times 5, 2 times 5 is 10. And we look over here, we've got 2 times x, which is 2 times x. We wouldn't write it that way, we'd just write it as 2x. And if we're joining them together, we'd put a plus sign there because the, the area of those shapes, for example, add together. We don't know um, what they are. <clears throat> so uh, we know what our answer here is, and we'll probably, we can write our answer. Uh, as 2x plus 10, I've just, I've just, um, let's put it like that. Okay, there's another way we can do this, and I'm going to put a plus sign here. I'm going to put some brackets around these guys just to keep them together, because what it looks like is, we're going to rewrite it as looking something like this. We've got 2 over here, we're going to write two brackets and we can write 5 plus x, no drama there. Or what we can do, and because it's a plus sign, you're most welcome to do this, is just swap them around. Why can't we write x plus 5? And then we can expand the brackets 2 times x is 2x and 2 times 5 is 10. There's a plus sign there, so 2 times 5 is 10. Now, now I've just cleaned the board. We've got a brand new example here. We've got 5a outside a set of brackets and inside the brackets we've got 3p minus 7q. Now 5a is our common factor to both these things. And that's why it's sitting out the front here. Our job is to expand the bracket. So we need our training wheels to help us manage this process until we get good at it. So they're the kinds of things I'm writing. I'm drawing two arrows because it's help, it, helping me remember what to do. So um, we've got 5a. I'm just going to write this out the long way here times 3p. Subtract, there's a subtract sign in there, so 
see how I'm carefully trying to keep everything in order here 5a times 7q I'm trying my best to keep everything in a little line here and um, that helps me check that I, I've done the right thing okay I've got a multiply sign here so let's do the numbers first uh, we've got 3 uh, 5 times 3 is 15 and now the, the letters, the pronumerals, we can just write them as A, P keep the subtract sign the same we can do the numbers on, on this guy here 5 times 7 is 35 we've got an A and a Q so we just write those down there and this is where we stop I'm just going to write stop because this is our answer we've been asked to expand the brackets and that's the job that we've done okay we don't need to do anything more unless of course we're told we're told what the value of A is what the value of P is uh, and also Q we need to know those things so for example if we've got those things and we're told for example that A is equal to 1 and P is equal to um, 2 and Q is equal to 3 we can go ahead with the substitution step and I'll just change the color of my pen here and we can write this down and carefully substitute in the values A is 1, P is worth 2 subtract 35 times 1 times Q which is 3 okay so we have to remember that this is multiplication so 15 times 1 is still 15 times 2 is 30 subtract 35 times 1 is still 35 times 3 is 70 is 105 so um, we're back to getting an answer here we're evaluating um, and now we, we can uh, write our final answer as just a number but the critical thing is uh, to do the substitution I need to know the values of those pronumerals and when you scan the question um, often when you in the top line of the question you might be told what those values are and my big tip here is to actually transfer them onto the page and write that next to next to the work that you're doing and maybe set it out like this so you can um, you can do this work all right now just to finish up I want to take this again I might do it just here I want to reassure you about this this idea of equivalence so the original thing that we worked on I'm just going to write it out again 3p minus 7q and we should get the same answer so substitution wise 5 times 1 is still 5 and we've got 3 times p which is 2 subtract 7 lots of q which is 3 so let's do the work in here so step by step I've got 6 2 times 3 is 6 subtract 6 subtract uh, what have we got 21 there I just realized I made a mistake here and it's, it's become obvious to me here I know I forgot this I should have put a negative sign in here so this is a great way to check that you get the right answer so what am I left with five times negative uh, 15 and that is going to be working out four times is 60 75 so this is going to be equal to negative 75 and just by double checking both methods I've picked up a mistake I would have made 
otherwise. So, brilliant. Um, what we've got now is uh, two equivalent expressions that produce the same answer. Okay, your job in this set of work is to expand the brackets. And occasionally, when you get down to the harder questions, you might be asked to do a bit of a substitution. And what a great way to check that you've got the right answer. Uh, looking at both the uh, factorized form that you started with and also the expanding form and make sure that they both give you the same answers and um, do the double checking. Okay, thank you.